sure you can probably see from my expression I'm squinting yes the sun is shining even though it's the middle of October well this is the sort of weather we love for grass track yes we get the cold mornings we get the cold nights but it does normally mean that we get superb track conditions we're here at Sierra the Battle of Hastings they're calling it the National Battle of Hastings because as I hadn't realized they haven't run too many nationals here if I turn the clock back, I remember the 250-350 Championships here in 1993, and that was a superb event. Well, the reason they haven't run many events this year was that uh, we thought Sierra weren't going to run too many in the future grass track. But they had the Wayne Boys Memorial Trophy meeting here earlier on in June. I'm told the racing was spectacular, and what the riders are telling me in the pits is they love the surface. So, we've got a tremendous lineup. The press have been saying it's a battle between Simon Cross and Steve Schofield. I don't think it's that simple. There is such a good lineup of riders here this afternoon that I think it's going to be a battle right to the very end. The 1,000cc chairs, there's really not much I can say. We saw a good event at Wimborne last week, and I know we're going to see another good event. We've got all of the riders here that are possibly going well in the country. The 500cc sidecars, well, they're here as well, and they're as good as a lineup as I've seen this year. So we're in, I think, for some spectacular racing. The weather conditions couldn't be better, and what I've seen of practice, it's going to be superbly quick. Well, as I mentioned in the intro, it's a little bit of a different circuit and what some of the solo boys are telling me is that perhaps it's uh, more suited to a grass track style rider. Well, of course, uh, something we are pleased to see is a good lineup of 500cc chairs and the man to watch at the moment has got to be Paul Miller. Paul, a great win down at the Whopper last week. Yeah, I mean, it didn't go very well to start off with. We had a puncher and then we had a chain come off and it's very difficult on home ground. You've got a lot of people there, you know, and we went there to do the business we didn't think we was going to do the business but at the end of the day we did it so we was pleased with that well i'm sure you'd be pleased so uh, perhaps i get from that you'll be a little bit more relaxed this afternoon we're suffering a bit today with flu and um but we'll gee ourselves up a bit later on we're taking it easy we've only had two practices two easy practices so we're saving our energy and yeah i mean we'd like to finish off it's the last national of the year for us 500s so we'd like to finish off with the win today well, it's always nice when I pick up a bit of information like that, the last national for the 500. So perhaps there's a lot of people around the pits here that will be thinking the same thing. Yeah, I mean, it's always, they're always, I mean, they're getting more competitive every week, really. And, um, and I'm sure the likes of Raz and, and the good wins, they're going to be out to beat us. So we look forward to some superb racing. Bob, I've got to bring you in quickly because uh, I think when you were presented the awards last week, you looked a very, very pleased person. Is it just because it was a local win? Yeah, it was. Um, I've been riding the Whopper about three or four times, and to win it was one of my ambitions. I've always wanted to win the Whopper. We missed out on the British finals by a single point, so to win the Whopper on a home track was brilliant. And like we said, it was just an unfortunate day with the puncture, then losing the chain, but it all came good at the end, so I enjoyed it. Well, it certainly came good at the end. I wish you the best of luck for this afternoon, boys. We look forward to speaking to you perhaps a little bit later on. Lovely. Around the pits, as you can see, we've moved to the bottom end of the pits and I've managed to find uh, Ivor Matthews. Ivor, I understand there's a change of plans for the day. A different passenger? Uh, yeah, Pete phoned me last night. Unfortunately, his horse has had an accident. He's got the vet coming out this morning and it's uh, obviously uh, thinks a lot of the horse, so he's uh, stayed there to stay with the vet. But I've been looking at practice. You've been out there with young Will Jones, I understand it is, that's passenging for you. And uh, he looks a very experienced passenger. The bike looks very quick. And I can't help noticing that it was the Australian Speedway style outfit that you're using. Yeah, we, we nearly didn't bring it because we weren't sure what it was going to be like. And then we had the big van, so we thought, oh, well, we'll throw it in and see. And it's, uh, it's nice and hard out there, so we thought we'd try it. And it's going around all right. There's a few bumps, but nothing it can't cope with. And uh, Will's adapted very quickly. I mean, he's, he's ridden it before because he rode with Neville on the Speedway on it. Uh, but I can't feel him, so that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> it's always an interesting statement, doesn't it? A driver can't feel the passenger, so he must be doing the right job. But, uh, no, we don't come down to Sierra very often, but it is a, a lovely-looking track. I mean, most of the riders I've spoken to say that it rides as good as it looks. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I've always enjoyed riding here. We had some uh, unfortunate weather at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. Uh, it tends to get a bit boggy when it's wet, but when it's nice and hard like this, it's lovely, yeah. Well, looking forward to a terrific day's racing. I've had the very best of luck. Thank you. One person I suppose I've got to have a word with. Last time I spoke to Simon Cross was at the beginning of the Masters. He now, of course, is Masters champion. Simon, you said to me at the time that you're going to try and do a few more grass tracks, and I think what I've been saying here today is this is a traditional grass track circuit. You've been out for practice. What do you make of it? Yeah, it's very nice. It's different. It's um, slightly banked on both corners. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it seems quite nice. You know, it seems uh, very smooth. A little bit on the slick side, but, um, you know, hopefully... We're going to try and get some good racing, but I think it'll be all important from the starts today. 
Well, yes, it's a quite a tight circuit. I think the starts, obviously, as we always know with grass track and even with speedway, it's really those starts that are so important. But watching the practice there, they're very wide and big bends, and quite a few of the traditional grass trackers, the Trevor Banks of the world and people like that, are actually making it look very, very slick. It's um, if you go down right on the line, it is slick, or you can ride just on the end, edge of the uh, the loose stuff and you can pick up a bit of drive but you got to be careful coming off the corners because they're they're sort of like an off camber it tends to take you out towards the pegs on the outside so um, it'll, it'll be uh, interesting you know, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some guys out there who, who are making mistakes and you've just got to be ready to pick up on them well the other obvious question I've got to ask you Simon is do you think that that has put any extra pressure back on you again now that you've won the title I'm sure there are quite a few guys out to beat me um, but uh, I, I just, you know, looking at it like another meeting, as I was the uh, with the the masters. So, if if it pay, you know, if it pays off for me, that I can go out there and be relaxed, and uh, you know, the other guys have got the pressure on them. Well, that's equally true. Of course, the pressure does go back the other way. Simon, I think you're a very worthy champion. It's great to see you back here at the grass tracks, and wish you the best of luck. Thanks very much. And we're with the 500 cc sidecars. Their first leg. Well, something that we're getting used to seeing now at Grand Strange, this uh, three-leg scoring and then into semi-finals. Top point scorers going through to the finals. As you watch them go into that first bend, you can see that Kevin Laird has gone right the way around the outside. A great first corner from him. On the inside is rider number 30, Mel Goodwin. And of course, passenger Mel Goodwin now is Wimble. Now, uh, those of you that were down at the Wimble Whopper last week may well have seen that Mel Goodwin going very well indeed. He's up in second place, of course. He has been having problems with his engine. That's been now sorted out by the Dutch tuner. He looks to be right back on form. Sitting in third place at the moment, number 92, that's Richard Piggott. And back to the start of the Simon King. The are going up to berserk now, trying to remember who it was that Simon King wrote for. But I know I've seen him out there passing him before on a 500. As we go into the last lap of the first race of the afternoon, no question at all about the leaders. Kevin Laird and Dick Alroy, they lead as they go into that bottom bend for the last time. Mel Goodwin not being able to close up the gap on them. That's probably a Richard Bing on that bottom bend, but he manages to save it. He's up the back straight, but he's let that gap open up between the second and third place. We see the checker flag for the first time this afternoon. It's race one in your programme, the first of the 500cc heats. And a win for number seven, Kevin Laird and Dick Conroy. A race leg of the 500cc sidecars, a win for outfit number seven, Kevin Laird and Dick Conroy. In second place, number 30, Mel Goodwin and Gary Rockall. In third place, number 92, Richard Piggott and Simon King. And fourth place there, the only other finisher, outfit number 13, Keith Baird and Bob Graves. The winning time, 130.64. 130.64.
just the way that he's headed Leyburn on that first corner. Perez has cut back underneath though and he's come through on the inside and it was actually number nine, Mark Summerfield, that had made the best of the starts. He's indeed lost out on that first bend. Back in third place now as it is. Uh, Now the gap's starting to open up between second and third place, but a good scrap going on for this first place. Brian Palmer not having it all his own way. It's Paul Miller and Bob Reed that are up there in second. Mark Stubberfield is still hanging on to that third place. Jerry Squirrel and Derek Page is that are trying to take that third away from them at the moment. Popper last week will know, of course, that Paul Miller and Bob Reed were in terrific form. And this is not going to do them any good at all to be beaten by Brian Palmer in the first race of the day. They were going very, very quick in practice, and I say, are they going to be eaten as they go around that bottom corner? You can see that Paul Miller, well, I thought he went in very quickly, but he's slow, and indeed has put his arm in the air on the far side. Paul Miller pops down. Palmer going around the corner for the last time into the checker flag, but there's a change in second place, or is there? Well, the line of clocks has gone the long way round, but he's made it pay as he gets into second place. Mark Stubberfield has to be content with third. But a good ride that to start the afternoon's racing from Brian Palmer. In of race two, as I can see that Paul Miller and Bob Reed deciding that uh, that may be one valuable point they can push round for. Race two, the official result reads as a win for number 71. That, of course, is Brian Palmer and Lester Goodwin. In second place, number 78, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. Third place, outfit number nine, Mark Stubberfield and Nick Harbour. Fourth place, number five, Dave Collin and Keith Goodley. Fifth place goes to number 34, that's uh, Jerry Squirrel and Derek Page. And as we're watching the watch closely, they... Uh, are pushing their way round. It's a very well-deserved point they're going to pick up for this sixth place. And officially will complete the results with a time of 129.94. 129.94. And as they cross the line to take the chequered flag, we can give you sixth place there as outfit number 17, Paul Miller and Bob Reed. That we've got to correct that time, that speed for race one. The average speed for race one was 49.07. Our apologies there that the corrected time is 49.07. The average speed for race two, 49.46. We now change classes. We turn our attention for the first time this afternoon to the solo class. This the Sierra Battle of Hastings. Race three in your program, the start of the solo competition. Three rides apiece into a semi-final, and then we get the whole event decided, that big final at the end of the day. come round off that bend it is indeed Steve Dawe that's got to the front Clayton Williams goes after him Steve Fisher's up in third with Tony Atkin holding fourth at the moment but look at Clayton Williams come round the outside well this really was fits Clayton Williams in style as he goes around the long bend he really is a the right the big bend he comes off that top bend with Steve Dawe not getting up though oh Steve Dawe is another rider that's really come on this year and shown us that he really does love to attack the bench. The great Williams looks to be in great form this afternoon. He goes up to make a play. He drops the door in the second. He's just a moment third moment. Tony Atkins back in third place. Now Robbie Fuller is the rider in the fifth place at the moment. Fuller is going to say great Williams is getting away with the moment. Andy, but look at the way Steve Dora is attacking Grace Williams. He's not letting him get away at all. As they come to the line, it's going to be close. And Steve Dora would have said maybe just as good it on the line. A tremendous ride for Steve Dora. 
And if that's going to set the pace for the rest of the day, what a terrific meeting we're in for. Solo competition. It's going to be a rider that loves riding the big bends, and we saw two of them out there there this afternoon. In race three, the official result reads as a win. On the line for number one, 1 0, Steve Dorr. In second place, number seven, Clayton Williams. Third place, number 34, Steve Bishop. Fourth place, number 10, Tony Atkin. Fifth place, number 16, Robbie Fuller. And sixth place, number 179, Simon Gittings. Seventh place, the only other finisher there, number 122, Graham Brown. 117.24 the time, 57.59 the speed, 117.24 the time. Well, if that's the way it started this afternoon, I can't say enough really, can I? We're in for some terrific racing this afternoon. Race four, we see a lineup with Trevor Banks, Paul Fry, Simon Cross, Steve Schofield. What a lineup to start the racing with. Steve Schofield and Simon Cross out again against each other. Those of you that went to Tunbridge to see the conclusion of the British Masters will know that Scully unfortunately hit engine problems in that final. It meant that Steve Simon Cross won the final and indeed won the British Masters title. So he holds it. Dean Garton, number 161, is another rider to look out for. He's won this Battle of Hastings trophy twice. We won it here last year, being head on points before the meeting was unfortunately abandoned, but uh, the year before he won it in his own right. A lot of tension on that start line by the look of it. I'm sure they're all sitting in the pit box watching what was happening in that first race. And I'm sure, like me, a lot thought, well, that's going to be a win to start Clayton Williams' uh, account for this afternoon. That was quickly changed. A lot of tension. Certainly, any rider in any sport wants to get that first race underway. Dean Garn is right up there with it, Steve Schofield is out in front, Lee Lanham has gone after him in second. Paul Fry now battling his way through, coming up behind Dean Garn in fourth place at the moment, Dean Garn still holding third. Man of the gun after him, but look at Paul Fry coming round the outside of Dean Garden. He went the long way round, but he made it pay as he comes past us. He's now up into third place and looking for Lee Lanham. Oh, great to see that he's done. He's going to say, 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 Lanham is still after him in second. Paul Fry definitely trying to make up places. He really is pushing it to the limit, Paul Fry in third place. Dean Guy wondering what he's going to do. The next back there is going to be played, followed by Simon Cross. He's making sure that they come to the line. It's a great win for the team. Goes to Lee Lanham gets a terrific second place. Paul Fry in third. Dean Garton in fourth. Simon Cross in fifth. And Trevor Banks in sixth. It looked very quick in practice. The racing has proved exactly the same. It's a win in race four for number three, Steve Schofield. In second place, number one, Lee Lanham. Third place, number 55, Paul Fry. Fourth place, number 161, Dean Garden. Fifth place was number 214, Darren Shand. And sixth place, number five, Trevor Banks. Seventh place, number 14, Simon Cross and 8th place number 31 Chris Tritton 9th place number 73 Julian Phipps the winning time 114.44 that equates to an average speed of 59.75 miles an hour a tremendous speed and to think that uh, somewhere around the circuit they're actually throwing it sideways
corner, which be caught up by the rest of the field as they come off that first bend. It's Peter Lloyd that's up there with Ben Howe out in front. Ben Howard is going into that bottom bend, but number four, Peter Lloyd is right there with him. Little God back in third place, now got Oh, Ben Howell looking as if he perhaps is suited to this sort of circuit. Oh, Gary Lobb now moving through in front of Mitchell Gordon to get up into third place. Peter Lloyd is not really losing much ground to Ben Howell. Ben Howell looking as if he might be suited to this sort of circuit. But it really is this battle at the front that we've got to watch because Peter Lloyd has now tried going wide. They go into the checker flag. Ben Howell takes it. Peter Lloyd gets second. Gary Long finishes in third. Mitchell Gordon in fourth. And Mark Seabright finishing in fifth. The official result. Sorry, I was interrupted there by a message from the pits, but the official result in race five was number 87, Ben Howell. In second place, number four, Peter Lloyd. Third place, number 17, Gary Lobb. And in fourth place, number nine, Mitchell Godden. Fifth place goes to number 167, Mark Seabright. And sixth place, 04. Seventh place, 121. Eighth place, 174. And ninth place, number two. The winning time, 116.58, that equates to a speed of 58.08. 58.08, the average speed, the first of the sidecar, right-handed sidecar, so that is 1,000cc. Race six in your programme. And I'm not aware of uh, any non-starters in this one. races this afternoon, looking to see who's made the best of it from the gate. Oh, it's Bill Pittman that was going well off the start line, but Russelling was right there with him. And it's Russelling and Paul Urich should have been forced to go wide by Bill Pittman. Oh, it's Bill Pittman that was going well off the start line, but Russelling was right there with him. And it's Russelling and Paul Urich should have been forced to go wide by Bill Pittman. Bill Pittman and Miles Simmons holding second and not giving up at all, trying to stay on the back wheel of Russelling. Well, they had some great rides down in the Whopper last week. And we wonder if it's all come right for them right at the back end of the season. But it's in that list, and Russelling and Paul Urich look to have things well and truly under control. They're riding some brilliant lines off those bends. Bill Pittman and Miles Simmons not having any answer to them at the moment. Just follow them into the bend. Vaughan Roberts holding third place at the moment. Place. As we keep our eyes on the front, it is Russelling that goes into the last lap leading. Mick Cave and Mick Stays have got up into that third spot. Paul Roberts and Alan. It's going to be a checkered flag, first time out for Russelling and for Urich. Phil Pittman and Raul Simmons take second. McCabe and McStace holding third place. Born Robertson, Alan Berry just indeed over the line in front of Andy Nourish and Eddie Elvis. First of the sidecars, their first leg and a win for number six, Russelling and Paul Urich. In second place, number 90, Phil Pittman and passenger Miles Simmons. Third place, outfit number five, they had to work for that one, Mick Cave and Mick Stace. 
In fourth place, number 14, Vaughan Roberts and Alan Berry. Fifth place, number 46. Sixth place, number 112. The winning time, 137.40. 137.40. The speed, 51.76. quick in practice he's made the best of the start as they go into that first bend but this certainly could be an interesting one because Dave Steer looks to be on form at the moment and he's missed the start completely Gary Jackson Martin Bennett looks to have got problems on the far side but it is Gary Jackson has moved up in a second Steve Smith and Keith Waldo going extremely well up at the front of the field watch for Dave Steer moving through though he's got up in the third place now as he's got in front of Jerry Adams for that third place. Look to be very much in control at the moment. Off that bottom bend they come, holding much the same line that uh, Russell Eng and Paul Urich held. Not hugging the flags at all, just holding the middle of the circuit. Interesting that Dave Steer holds a much, much tighter line and may pay off or uh, pay dividends towards the end of the day, but at the moment he's not gaining any ground at all. <laughs> see the checker flag raised for the second time for the sidecar class. It's a win, first time out for. Steve Smith and Keith Wall. Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams finish in second. Day Steer and Andy Orchard in third. And number 55, Jerry Adams and Paul Baysby finishing in fourth place. The official result reads as a win for number two, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. In second place, number 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Third place, number 17, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. Fourth place, number 55, Jerry Adams and Paul Baysby. Fifth place going there to the only other finisher, Tim Bennett, number 12, of course. And the winning time, 136.60. That equates to a speed of 52.19. 136.60 then, the time to beat for the sidecars. And as you can see, we're rather depleted in this one. There's no Alan Blewett that's turned up as yet. So four riders only, but an interesting one it could be because Rob Wilson Jr. has got to the front. Barley's certainly been going very, very well. And he's... Rob Wilson Sr. at the back of the four so far. But John Halsey, the rider in second place, is going to try and take up the pursuit of first. He holds a brilliant tight line, John Halsey. And that must be the first outfit that's taken advantage of holding a tight line on this pit bend. He certainly made it pay. He's forced Robbie Wilson to go very, very well. John Halsey and Jason Glennie in terrific form at the moment as they come round that bottom bend. Now Robbie Wilson holds a very tight line as he got the advantage this time. He comes up the straight in second place. Rob Wilson Sr. and Tony Miles holding third place and they've now got to go after the boy in front. <laughs> Indeed, is he testing the circuit, I wonder? Well, he goes into the last lap. He's realised he's got a bit of an advantage, so perhaps he is looking for what could be a quicker line. Be used in major races. flag raise, John Halsey holds a reasonably tight line that time as Rob Wilson does get round the outside he gets second place and Rob Wilson 
Junior and uh, Colin Hill finish in third. Outfit number 13 gets first place, John Halsley and Jason Glennie. Having their own little family battle in outfit number 24 finishes in second, that's Rob Wilson Senior and Tony Miles. Finishing in third, number 25, Robbie Wilson and Colin Hill. In fourth place, number 58, that of course is Pete Dyer and passenger Justin Westaway. No other finishes there, the winning time won 35.64, a speed of 52.71. Interesting one, perhaps this one to see that Ivor Matthews and Will Jones are out on that Australian style outfit. How will it come off the start? Well, indeed, as I say that, it looked as if it had been a good start for them, but uh, the clerk of the course not happy about something. <laughs> so the finishing marshal being uh, advised to hold out the red flag. We know that Will Jones has passengered before, and he said, Well, the highest compliment I can pay him is that I couldn't feel him during practice. Now, if a driver can't feel the passenger, he knows if the bike's performing well, the passenger is doing his job. So, uh, no lack of confidence there at all from Ivor Matthews in his new passenger for this afternoon. It's a, it's a bit of an unusual one. Can the lady driver and her passenger of a light blue Metro, registration D227VPJ, could you please return to the gate? It appears you forgot to pay. <laughs> race nine as we get underway it is again Ivor Matthews has made a good start Joe Mogg is right up there on the inside as he gets to the front Ivor Matthews goes round the outside Roger Misa comes underneath him Mark Edwards is up there as they get themselves sorted out as they get down the back straight it is Ivor Matthews and Will Jones that have got to the front Mark Edwards and Nick Walters trying to go after them though you can see what I mean about this young crew they really are looking to give the top boys a run for their money. All sorts of problems for Nick Walters there. That would certainly put my heart in the mouth as I to get Top bend, sort of a nasty moment that I saw there, but they've recovered well. Either Matthews and Pete Will Jones, it is that still lead. Roger Matt Misa has got up in the second. Well, indeed, I can say that I think that Mark Edwards has hit a back wheel puncture by the look of it. He's uh, fighting with that outfit, and I think that it's that little feature that uh, has lost his on that top bend. Oh, Bill still continuing on by the look of it. The last lap flag going for Ivor Matthews and Will Jones and Roger Misa now starting to close the gap. Well, unfortunately, Bill Beecham uh, going round. Joe Mogg is holding third. And as so much is happening at the back of the field, we've got to try and keep our eyes on what's happening at the front of the field because Roger Mita has gone for a wide line to try and take the lead from Ivor Matthews. He's gone extremely wide. He doesn't quite do it, but he certainly showed there may be a way round that bottom bend. A good win then to start the afternoon off for Ivor Matthews and Will Jones. Result for race nine, a win for outfit number 15, Ivor Matthews and passenger this afternoon, Will Jones. In second place, number 51, that is Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham. In third place, and it was only just on the line, number 98, Joe Mogg. And I uh, can't remember who's Joe's passenger is now. Number 98 is Joe Smith, of course, passenger in Joe Mogg. Shouldn't work from memory, should I? In fourth place, number eight, Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. The winning time, 135.28. The speed equates to 52.91. Now what has actually happened is that the second place finishes, number 30 Mel Goodwin and number 78 Lionel Cox, they've in fact swapped over. They, uh... Oh have they? No they haven't, no. It's, uh, they go in the same race. So I wonder whether we will see a change in positions. Looking at race 10, Mark Stubberfield had a very good start first time out. To see whether he does that again. Paul Miller, of course, in problems halfway through. He's desperate to make up his points. That's the way he's just going to go back to the back. And then made a very good start, but he's only in second place.
behind us. Mel Goodwin. As they come round past me, it is Mel Goodwin. Mel Goodwin, of course, passenger at the moment from the... Uh, Clayton is going to try and put the challenge on. Is he going to go for a wide line? I might be seeing him come back underneath as he comes out the exit of the bend. Kevin Laird not up there fighting out for the front though as I would have expected. He's back in third place at the moment battling with Mark Stubberfield. Well, good week. Certainly those two have opened up that gap between them and Kevin Laird in third place. One more lap to go as Paul Miller again tries to hold that side line. I'm sure he's looking for a quick line into the bend. He takes a very wide, and again Paul Miller's hit problems. What a great shame for Paul Miller, he's missed out in that first line. Again he's hit problems on this bottom corner, he pulls off in the centre of the circuit. It means that it leaves Mel Goodwin and passenger Gary Rockall with a clear win. Kevin Laird and Dick Ormroyd get second, Mark Stubberfield and Nick Harbour get third. Keith Baird and Bob Graves crossing the line in fourth. But what terrible luck for Paul Miller and Bob Reid after going so well last weekend at the Wimbledon Whopper. Of oh, race 10, a win for outfit number 30, Mel Goodwin and Gary Rockall. In second place, number seven, Kevin Laird and Dick Olmroyd. In third place, number nine, Mark Stubberfield and Nick Harbour. Fourth place, number 13, Keith Baird and Bob Graves. And fifth place, number five. No other finishes there, the winning time, 123.92. The speed, 53.01. Well, as the riders come to the line for race 11, all eyes, I'm sure, on Brian Palmer this time. He had a win first time out. It's outfit number 71. As I say at the moment, it looks as if we are waiting for Jerry Squirrel. He's now got the outfit going. into the front. Lionel Cox holding second at the moment. Richard Figueres certainly won that battle for third place. He gets up into third, but Jerry Squirrel now going after him. But Brian Palmer and Leslie Goodwin in it have got to the front. Uh, quickly corrected uh, that uh, isn't Simon. Bit of confusion there, and we'll see number 13 down again, but it appears that Simon there is uh, riding number four's outfit, number 13's outfit this time. There's certainly no confusion at all about uh, who is holding the lead. Brian Palmer in terrific form this afternoon, goes up that back straight. With quite a gap now on second place, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. Richard Piggott not being able to close the gap at all. As we see the checkered flag go, it's two eyes and two wins of Ryan Palmer. Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen finish in second. Richard Piggott and Simon King finish in third. Result a win for outfit number 71. That, of course, is Brian Palmer and Lester Goodwin. In second place, number 78, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. Third place, number 92, Richard Piggott and Simon King. And fourth place, number 34, that's Jerry Squirrel. Fifth place finisher there was number four, although you saw fifth place going across the line number 13, that was a borrowed outfit, so it, the official result goes to number four, Simon Baird and Gary Aldridge. The winning time, 123.45, 53.30 the, the average speed, 53.30 that speed. Almost this there is that Peter Lloyd goes in this one, he had a second first time out. 
has indeed uh, Dean Garten also out there, a fourth place first time out. Peter Lloyd looking for that inside line just in front of Dean Garp. Steve Bishop is up there behind uh, Steve Bishop. Uh, Steve Bishop can't be behind Steve Bishop, can he? He can be behind Dean Garp. Uh, Got away once again. Uh, he really does look to be great for Steve Schofield. He comes off that top corner. Trevor Banks got no answer to him. But really, Trevor Banks has just got to concentrate on staying in front of... Uh, Peter Lloyd is going well in third place. Dean Garton trying to stay on third for them. Both Dean Bishop still holding at sixth place. John Farmer back in sixth place. Realising just how quick the, the rest of the field has been going. Well, into the last time they go. And if you watch that far side, Steve Gofield looks to be in a world of his own this afternoon. Goes up that back straight into the top bend, and he can reach off his top bend into the checkered flag for the second time this afternoon. Two rides and two wins. To the banks, a much better ride for him. He gets second. Peter Lloyd in third. Dean Garden in fourth. Steve Bishop in fifth. And Tommy Palmer finishing sixth. The official result. I'm sure you've all got number three in first place already. That, of course, is Steve Schofield. In second place, number five, Trevor Manx. Third place goes number four, Peter Lloyd. Fourth place, number 161, Dean Garten. Fifth place, number 34, Steve Bishop. And sixth place, number 21, that's a reserve, Tommy Palmer. Seventh place, number 19. Eighth place, 121. Ninth place, number two. The winning time, 112.87. That equates to 61.04 average speed miles per hour well we said we were going to hit over 60 we missed out 60 as my uh, lap score is like is one of them he's right up there at the front Clayton Williams who had a second first time out Gary Love up there as well he's holding third place so watch those two at the front. Clayton Williams had that terrific scrap with Steve Dorr first time now. He's been on top four, Brian with the And those these two in terrific form as they go into that top corner together. They know by now that this is a circuit he can go flat out in the bends. No holds barred as uh, eminent commentators would normally say. Into the bend they go. Full steam on as Paul Brian now takes over the lead from Clayton Williams. Gary Lobb just watching those two in front of him, and I'm sure he's wondering just how they're getting that extra speed. Well, Paul Bryan, we know, loves to ride the big corners. Clayton Williams traditionally, of course, the rider that loves his leg trailing style, always so entertaining. So they certainly piled the speed on. It'll be interesting to see how this side compares to these go through. But as they cross the line, it's certainly a win for number 55 at Paul Bryan. Clayton Williams in second, Gary Lobbing third. 55, Paul Fry. In second place, number seven, Clayton Williams. Third place, number 17, Gary Lobb. Fourth place, number 16, Robbie Fuller. Fifth place, number 31, Chris Tritton. And sixth place, number nine, Mitchell Gordon. Seventh place there was taken by number 122. Two. Eighth place, 73. Ninth place, 174. The winning time, 113.03. That equates to 60.91 miles an hour. You couldn't get much closer, could you? Tremendous speeds from these riders. What's going to happen when we get to the semis and finals later on in the day? Well, we turn our attention to race 14 because this one sees two first leg winners, Steve Dorr and Ben Howe out together. But don't forget, Lee Lanham had a second place. Simon Cross needs to pick up points this time. Oh, what could happen? Tony Atkin, he of course had a fourth place first time out. He'll be looking for a better result this time. Oh, it's 
certainly promises to be a cracker, as indeed this whole solo competition promises to be this afternoon. finishing in 8th place. The winning time, 113.74. 113.74 it is. The speed, 60.32. So, all three of those leg rides knocking over the averaging 60 miles an hour. We move over to the right-hand side cars. This their second ride of the afternoon. Going in race 15, of course, John Halsley and Jason Glenny, they had a win first time out. And Robbie Wilson had a third, of course, Vaughan Roberts finishing in a fourth place. Joe Mogg finished in third. And Jerry Adams finished in fourth as well. So uh, plenty of chance for riders to make up better positions this time. Well, away we go. It was a very quick start. And looking to see who's made the best bit. Jerry Adams looks to have made the best of it. John Horsey goes after him now, and we watch to see whether it will be John Horsey that goes round the outside. Indeed he does, and uh, Robbie Wilson was up on the inside. Joe Adams up in third place as well. As you watch to see him go in the bottom bend for the first time, it is John Horsey and Jason Glenny that come off that bottom bend, leading from uh, Robbie Wilson and Colin Hill. Jerry Adams and Paul Baseby holding third. Joe Mogg is holding fourth in front of Vaughan Roberts. John Halsey, after winning the South Eastern Centre Championships at High Holden, has shown that he has got this engine well and truly sorted out. What he's telling us is that it's due to the ignition system. difference to his machine and the way he's going at the moment he's certainly uh, proving those words are justified 
Uh, Robbie Wilson and Colin Hill getting better and better as the years go on, holding second at the moment. Jerry Adams and Paul Basie. Again, that they are, of course, your southeastern centre sidecar champions. They picked up that title at High Horton not too many weeks ago. For outfit number 13, that's John Halsey and Jason Glennie, two rides and two wins. In second place, number 25, Robbie Wilson and Colin Hill. In third place, number 55, Jerry Adams and Paul Baysby. Fourth place, number 14, Vaughan Roberts and uh, was Vaughan's passenger this afternoon is Alan Berry. In fifth place, number 98, Joe Mogg. The winning time, 132.88, 132.88. The speed, 54.28. Well, did he confirm that, that it is? And of course, uh, the information has been flying ever since I said I didn't know whether that he was using Russell's outfit. And of course, he already said Russell has two outfits nowadays. So uh, perhaps uh, we're going to see some changing of machinery for Steve Smith. Well, we'll see how he goes in this one. He had a win first time, you remember, because of course he's up against Roger Mesa, Pete Dyer, Dave Steer, Bill Beecham and Phil Pittman. And as they get underway, Steve Smith has made the best of the starts. Roger Mesa goes after him. So one thing at least being proved is that Steve Smith can get Russell's bikes off the line as he goes round that first thing. the V-twin power and of course the power band so different on the multi-cylinders but he's certainly got to grips with it very quickly no stranger of course to multi-cylindered power as Roger Mesa gets to the front Steve Smith still there in his second place that bottom bend. Roger Mesa looking for a win second time out. Well, Phil Pittman's had a great bottom corner. He's come through in the third place in front of Dave Steer and now closing the gap rapidly on Steve Smith. Goes a little bit wide on that top bend. to get away. And this has proved to be a good corner for Phil Pittman. Dave Steer now trying the inside line as they go into the last lap. Really, those three outfits are going to be together as they come to the line, I'm sure, because Dave Steer has now got up into third place. Because there really are three different lines around that one afternoon. Roger Mesa gets away from them. I wonder if there is going to be any change. It's going to be close to the line. Steve Smith is going to be pushed all the way, but he hangs on to it. Dave Steer gets third place. Phil Pittman gets fourth. So Roger Mesa picks up his first win of the afternoon. Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham in second place, number two, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. Third place, number 17, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. Fourth place, number 90, Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons. Fifth place, number 58, and of course is Pete Dyer. The winning time, 132.74. 54.36 that equates to as an average speed. As we turn over the page, we go to race 17. This, of course, still with the second leg of the sidecars. This one we knew would be a rather depleted field. But as we get underway, there's certainly some interesting points to be gained here. As Russelling goes into the top bend, looking perhaps for his second win. That's second place, Gary Jackson trying to go for second. Mick Cave on the inside. Rob Wilson also trying to get some advantage out of it as well. He's been forced to go on a very, very wide line, but it looks to me like Mick Cave has hung on to his second place. Oh, tremendous sidecar racing at the moment as Mick Cave fights every inch of the way for that second place. Second is very important as well. Just five points on second place. Gary Jackson knows that. He's desperately trying to get it. Rob Wilson also wants it as well as he follows both of them round. And Mick Cave has indeed lost his second from second to fourth in one big corner, but he's trying to make up for it as he goes round the outside. Now up in 
the second. And Rob Wilson closes again on Gary Jackson. As you watch to see what happens in this bottom bend. Gary Jackson has gone very wide. Rob Wilson's on the inside. And Rob Wilson going for that inside line. Is there a gap there going into that top bend? Gary Jackson doesn't think so. As they go round that top bend, he hangs on the second. to see what happens for second place. Gary Jackson, will he drift wide again? He knows Rob Wilson can hold it tight. He's done enough to hang on. Russelling and Paul Urich get their second win. Gary Jackson gets second place. Rob Wilson finishes in third. A very unfortunate for Mick Cave and Mick Stace. They finish with problems in fourth place. Crack the race, it turned out to be a win for outfit number six, Russelling and Paul Urich. In second place, number 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Third place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. And fourth place, number five, Mick Cave and Mick Stace. 133.54 the time, 53.89 miles an hour. 133.54, 53.89. Who's Shane Baker going in this one, but uh, one to keep your eye on is, of course, outfit number 15, Ivor Matthews and Will Jones. They've had a win in their first ride. And as we've seen twice already, riders that won their first ride have come out and won their second ride. We've got Russelling and John Halsey sitting on maximum 12 points at the moment. Well, I can see there's problems on that start line for Tim Bennett. has got his machinery going again he now comes into line of course uh, there was due to be one rider missing from race 18 we've now known that Sean Baker hasn't turned up so as we get underway we watch to see what happens Mark Edwards has made a good start on the inside he indeed has got to the front Ivor Matthews and Will Jones move into second as they go round that first bend looking to hold it side the advantage is that Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. I'm sure they'll be pleased to be out in front at the moment, but they'll know that Ivan Matthews is going to be gunning for them as he comes through on the inside. He rode a brilliantly tight line then, particularly on the exit of that pit bend. That's where he got the advantage. Come up the inside of Mark Edwards. Up Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. They had a fourth place first time out. And they'll be hoping to capitalise on points this time. Parallel twin as they go round the bottom bend, but as we go into the last lap, what does look to be uh, proving to be a very wise decision was that Ivan Matthews told me this morning he wasn't sure whether to bring this outfit at all. Of course he's front on the back end but the decision was made they brought it with them it looks to have been the right decision it's probably given them a very hard ride but it's certainly paying dividends mark edwards and nick walters get second andy norris finishing in third and tim bennett in fourth last of the sidecar right-handed style second leg rise a win and his second of the afternoon outfit number 15 ivor matthews and will jones in second place, outfit number eight, Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. Third place, number 46, Andy Nourish and Eddie Elvis. Fourth place, number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. The winning time, 133.25. That's the speed equating to 54.06.